Hey guys and welcome back for another ANSYS Workbench tutorial. Today we'll be going over some new features with ANSYS version 18 for topology optimization. We'll begin with a simple bracket geometry, apply our boundary conditions and loads, and then finally optimize the part in order to reduce its mass, hence saving material costs should you ever decide to manufacture it. So let's begin. Here I've already opened up ANSYS Workbench version 18.1. I'll begin by double-clicking on ANSYS Static Structural to bring it into the Project Schematic window. I'll now rename this to Bracket Optimization. Next, we should always start off with looking at the engineering data. So in this case, we'll be keeping it as the default structural steel. If you would like to change the material, you can go ahead and use the engineering data sources to choose the material that you'd like to add to your project. Let's close out out of engineering data and let's double click on geometry to start up space claim. So once you've started space claim, you'll be presented with this welcome window. You can choose this to uncheck and not see this again. We'll click on close. Now here is where we can start designing our part for a bracket. So let's start by clicking on plan view to go normal to the sketch plane. And we'll start out by drawing a line. We'll click on the origin to begin the line and then we'll enter 30 millimeters vertically upwards. We'll then continue the line horizontally and then we'll enter 20 millimeters. We'll then finish off by joining at the origin. Once that's done, you can go ahead and click escape. And next we're gonna round off these corners by using the pull tool. So click on the pull tool. And then by clicking on this point over here, you can pull this in and then you can enter a value of two and then hit enter. And then we'll click on this point and we'll do the same thing. Pull that in and then hit two, enter. Click on this corner over here, pull that in, and hit 2, and then enter. Now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead back into our sketch mode, and we're going to click on Circle. And then we will create our circle by clicking at the snap point here, and we will enter 2 millimeters for the circle diameter, and the same thing for here, 2 millimeters, and the same for the circle over here, 2 millimeters, and then hit enter. So now we have our circles created and we will now extrude this bracket by two millimeters and we'll hit the pull tool again and we will pull this out, we'll click on it and we can actually enter the dimension by clicking on let's say ruler and we can hit two and then hit enter and now we've extruded this bracket by two millimeters. Once that's done we can see that we have created a surface when we use the pull tool which was around the holes and we also have a solid. Now we can suppress this part and not use this in the physics, so we can right click on the surface and click suppress for physics. Next we can go ahead and close out of space claim. Now that we're outside of space claim, we can go ahead and double click on model or cell number four to open up mechanical. So once in mechanical, we can go ahead and we can see our 3D part that we've created here. We can click on geometry and we can see that we've only imported the solid geometry. And we can go ahead and right click on mesh and generate a quick mesh. Now we can see that it's kind of coarse and we want to get the details around where we're going to be applying our boundary conditions. So we can go ahead and click on sizing and instead of adaptive we'll change it to proximity and curvature. We can right click and then generate mesh again. Now you can see we have a, a much finer mesh and we have a slightly more details around where we're going to be applying our boundary conditions. So now we're going to go into Static Structural, right click, and we're going to insert a cylindrical support. And we're going to be choosing the bottom interior face over here. And while holding control, we will select this other face over here. And then we will click on Apply. So now we have two faces selected. And we were going to make the tangential component of this boundary condition free, which means that, we are, that these joints will allow to rotate in this plane. They will not allow to be moved in the Y direction, nor the Z direction or the X direction, radially or axially. Next, we're going to right click and insert a bearing load. And we're going to put that bearing load at this hole over here and we'll hit apply. And instead of using a vector, we will change that to components. And we'll put, let's say, 50 newtons in the X direction and a 100 newtons in the Z direction. Now once we have our boundary conditions set, all we need to do is add a solution so we can go and insert 
uh, stress and equivalent von, von Mises stress. And now we're ready to go and solve our solution. So we can either right click on solution solve or we can hit the solve button up here. And there you have it. So we can go and click on equivalent stress and we can see that this is how our part is deforming. And you can click on graph and click on the play button to get a quick animation of the deformation of the bracket. You can see that we have about 83 megapascals, which is under the limit. And as you can see here that there's a lot of blue, which means that the stress in this area is almost zero. And therefore, we can optimize the mass of this bracket in order to reduce this area and just keep the material that's required. So in order to do this, we're going to close out of Mechanical and we're going to go into our toolbox and we're going to drag on Topology Optimization over the Solution cell. This will share the information from the analysis that we've just completed and create a Topology Optimization Analysis. Once that's done, we can go ahead and double click on Setup to launch the Mechanical Interface with Topology Optimization. So once in, now you can see that we have the static structural analysis as well as B5, which is the topology optimization branch. So you can see right away that the topology optimizer already excluded the regions of our boundary conditions from the optimization problem. And it chose the full body of the bracket as the design region. So we can go into analysis settings and we can see we can leave this as the default 500 iterations and a convergence accuracy of 0.1. You can also check the output controls and analysis data management for further options. Next, we'll go into optimization region. So as you can see here, the scoping method is all bodies. We only have one body in this case that we want to optimize. And the excluded regions are defined by boundary conditions. So in this case, it excluded these, four, uh, these three boundary conditions. Or you can change it from boundary conditions to geometry selection or even name selections. Now for the objective, we're going to leave this as the default. This is the default for static structural. And under response constraint, this is where you can choose exactly what you want to optimize. So in our case, we want to optimize the mass. However, you can also do an optimization for volume, global stress, displacement, local stress, and reaction force. So in our case, we're going to leave it as the default mass, and we're going to change the percent to retain to 60%. Next, we can go into the solution. And we want to make sure that in post-processing we have export topology STL file and that's set to yes because we're going to be exporting this afterwards. So once that's done, all we have to do is click on solution and we're going to click on solve to optimize. Now once this is running, you can go and click on topology density tracker to track the topology optimization process. Now as it's running, you can also click on solution information and you can see the convergence curves by changing this to objective mass and response convergence curves. Or you can click on optimization output or solver output, etc. So now we could see that it's done and we've seen that it removed all of the section over here on the inside of the bracket. And we can also click on an animation to see the number of iterations and how it removed that material over the iterations. Now once our topology optimization is complete, we can go and close out of Mechanical and we can right click on the results and click on Transfer to Design Validation System. Now what this is going to do is it's going to transfer the optimized results to a new static structural system. Now we can see a new static structural system with the results being the input for the geometry of this analysis. So let's go ahead and now right click on cell 7 here and let's click on Update. And once that's updated, we'll right-click on Geometry in the third analysis and click on Update. Great, so once that's done, we can go ahead and double-click on the geometry to see the imported geometry file. So this brings us back into Space Claim. We'll close out of the Welcome window. And now you can see that it imports both parts. So we have two systems, the original part over here, which was our original bracket, and if we check this one over here, we have our optimized part. Now, if you're really lazy, you can go ahead and click on the facets and click on convert to solids. Now, this will completely convert this geometry to a solid file, and you can right away go ahead and use it in your new analysis. However, as you can see here, the edges are pretty rough, and this geometry is not very easy to manufacture. So we're going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time on simplifying this geometry before running it in our final analysis. So in order to do that, we're going to create a sketch by clicking on this over here, Sketch Mode. 
and we're going to click on this face over here. Now what we'll do is we'll select all of these edges by drawing a box all over this and we're going to click on the copy and then paste button. Now this copied all of those edges onto our new sketch plane. We can go ahead and now hide system 1 which will hide all the facets which leaves us with, with our curve geometry. Next we're, what we're going to want to do is simplify all of these curves. So there's an easy tool in Space Claim where you can select this whole geometry and then under the Repair tab we can click on Fit Curves. Now you can see here under Fit Curves you'll see the curve that it'll try to fit across these lines. And here are some of the parameters. So we want to actually correct the tangency so we'll check that and we'll leave it at the default 0.1 millimeters. So once that's done click on the check mark to fit the curve. Now you can see we have a much more simplified geometry. However, it might not be simple enough. Let's go ahead and simplify things a little bit more over here. So let's go into the design and let's click on circle and we'll find the center point of this circle and we'll snap it to this edge over here and we'll go ahead and use the trim tool, trim away, and we will trim away these edges here that we don't want. There we have it. And we can do the same thing for the circle over here. Go ahead and make another circle and we'll snap it to this edge over here and we'll use the trim tool and we'll trim this away. Forgot to trim the inside on this one. Next what we can do is simplify this, trim these lines and connect a line joining these two. And we can do the same thing over here. We can delete this curve and this curve and we can use the create corner tool to join these up and maybe over here we don't really need all of these details so we can select this delete all of this delete that and we can draw a line connecting this curve all the way here and finally we want to simplify this over here we can delete these and connect a line here now our bracket is looking a lot more manufacturable However, if you wanted to round off these corners, we can go ahead and use the pull tool and we can click on these edges here and we can round these off. And the same thing goes for here. You can round those off. Now once that's all rounded off, we'll go and use the pull tool to extrude this. So we'll click on the surface over here and we'll click on ruler and we will enter two millimeters. There we have it. Now as you can see here we have some surfaces that have been created and if you want to simplify those you can also use um, the under the repair tab you can go merge faces. So you can let's say select these faces over here and then you can click on this check mark to merge those faces. Same goes for let's say these two faces. Maybe you want to merge these faces and these ones over here. And there you have it. So here's our re-engineered bracket ready for analysis. So as you can see now we have solid surface and a couple of systems and we want to make sure that we don't transfer these. So we can right click on this, suppress for physics, and we can click on this surface here and suppress for physics. And we are left with our solid over here. So let's close out of space claim and let's double click on model and let's click on yes to reread the upstream data. Now once we're in mechanical we can see that we have our geometry file here that's been imported which is the optimized part. And now we have to remesh this so we'll go ahead and make sure that proximity and curvature are there and we'll generate a mesh. And once we have our mesh we're going to reapply our cylindrical supports. so we'll click on the selection over here and holding control we will select this surface here and this one here and click on apply. And we will click our bearing load and click on selection and choose this surface and click apply. And then we'll go and run our solution. Now we'll click on equivalent stress. And as you can see the stress is slightly higher than it was before. However now the mass has been reduced by 40%. So there you have it. There's a quick tutorial on the topology optimization. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you next time.